Okay, so I've just been sent this CrowPi L, which is a laptop for Raspberry Pi 4, but they've also sent me a CrowTail starter kit, which is basically uh, a maker kit with all sorts of things in it. This looks very cool, and I'll have a look at this in a minute. But uh, first of all, I wanted to get the laptop out and start building that up. Okay, so all sorts of things in the box. So this is a mouse, uh, which actually comes with a dongle as well, so it's ready to go. You can see a 2.4G dongle. We've got a USB power supply, uh, but you wouldn't plug this straight into a Pi uh, because it's 12 volt, 2 amps, which is 24 watts. But that's to charge up the laptop and power the laptop at the same time, so it needs more power than a normal Pi. We also have this, which is a fan, but also allows the GPIO pins to be used. SD card adapter, mine's already got an SD card in it. This plugs into the side of the laptop to give you access to all the accessories. So this is a bit like the GPIOs. So you're plugging the accessories into this and then I guess following all the courses to be able to see how it all works. Various different bolts, a couple of bits of acrylic. I need to pull off this brown paper. I guess it's clear inside. And an instruction book which opens out and what looks like pretty clear instructions on how to put the Pi inside. So it's a Pi 4, I'm going to use my Pi 4 4 gig. And the laptop, which has a very nice Crow Pi logo on here, etched in. And if we spin it around and flip it open, looks very nice. Pull off this. Uh, so we've got on the side, this is the port for adding the accessories. Headphone jack, full-size HDMI, USB-C for the charger. Uh, and then we've got the slot to give you Ethernet and three of the USB sockets from the Pi. And on the back, we've got a couple of speakers. It's actually stereo. And so somewhere inside this, there is a battery. Let's close that down and flip it upside down. Now I think this is magnetic. Yeah, this is magnetic. So just comes out with you just flipping it open. This is screwed in, so I guess the battery's in here. Might be worth having a quick look in there. Yeah, that reveals the battery, which is 500 milliamp. So nothing else in there, so let's pop that back on. So that's the last screw in. Uh, what I have noticed, really nice rubber feet on the base of it so it doesn't move around. Uh, you can see that my board is already in there. So the board that actually attaches to the Pi uh, is actually already in place. Uh, and I guess that's because ribbon cables can be a pain to connect and disconnect. So uh, that's a nice addition. So first step is to install these magnets on the Pi. I do like magnets. So it's these four. I've already put one in, as you can see. There we go, all in. Next, pop the SD card adapter in. So let's take some of this tape off to release all of this. That's just for transit. Pop the HDMI board in, so that must be this way around. Gonna get these nice and straight. Pop the little USB adapter in here. Now, if we spin this around, uh, so this is the port that's blanked off, so it must be this top one here. Being careful to make sure that little ribbon cable doesn't come out. Yeah, that's in. So this obviously goes flush with the case. So we can pop this in and this should snap into place with the magnets now. Yeah, that's held in place with the magnets. That's so cool. So no movement at all. Really, really neat. Look at the way all that fits in. And then we can see all the ports that are accessible. And then we can pop this on top, which is for the GPIO pin. So that basically takes it out to here, and I guess ultimately out to this cable to be able to use all the accessories. Uh, so that must be, well the fan obviously is gonna go on top of the CPU. And that pushes all the way down. That's the hardest bit so far, I would say, getting that bit on, but that's still pretty simple. And let's pop this magnetic lid back on. Do like that. And we can spin it around and we can plug into the USB charge socket. And it's worth labeling that plug uh, to make sure that you don't use it for something else as it's 12 volt. Okay, so plugged in and switch on. And if we flip it open, so we've got a light on the side there you can see. And let's just press the power button. Nice little Alacro logo that comes up at the start. Nice little customized loading screen as well with the Pi logo on the eye. Okay, so straight into the lessons, which is decent. And if I try the trackpad up here, seems like a weird place for it, but uh, rather that than not having a trackpad, uh, you know, sometimes you don't want to have to get a mouse out. Oh yeah, so they have gone for a definitely a different style. It's based on Raspberry Pi OS. 
In fact, let's have a look. So let's go down to terminal. So although the trackpad is fine, uh, it's definitely going to be nicer to use a mouse. So I'm going to use the mouse. So pop an AA battery in, pop the little dongle out, and then put that in. Might as well put that in the USB 2 socket, so that's the one nearer to me. Uh, the two USB 3 sockets are behind it. Uh, so now I have yeah, mouse control, so much quicker, much nicer to use. Well, let's pop this base on. And I plugged in an HDMI socket, and the default is to have exactly the same display. So I've got exactly the same display on the top screen as I have on the bottom screen. I'm sure you can change that, uh, but that's handy for me because I've done this so I can screen capture, so rather than show you the laptop, I can show you what's happening on the screen. Okay, so it doesn't let me change the screen resolution, and my capture device doesn't like it as it is. So let's go configure and screens. Uh, so HDMI 1 is this screen, uh, and you can see it comes up with fixed mode. Uh, but if I do exactly the same configure and screens and HDMI 2, uh, that also does the same. Now, I'll be able to do this in other operating systems, but maybe they block this so that people don't um, accidentally change the resolution or mess about with the system. Uh, it looks like it's running in about 720, something like that, but I'll find out from the specs later on. So let's just run NeoFetch. Uh, I don't know if it's already installed. No. So sudo install NeoFetch. And yes. Keyboard feels nice. And let's run NeoFetch again. Oh, unable to. I just, I was on autopilot then and I thought it was just gonna install it and, and work. You know what it is, I've just not got a network. Uh, so if I plug in my ethernet connection, could connect it to Wi-Fi, obviously the Pi has Wi-Fi, but it's always quicker to do ethernet. Uh, and let's try that again. You don't need to do this, I'm only doing this to see what the operating system is. So sudo apt install NeoFetch. That's better. Always read what it says. Yeah, it's a good screen. Uh, I tell you, it, it, what's nice about it is it's very non-reflective. Uh, so I can see much more reflection in my main monitor than I can in this screen. And it's good from an angle as well. Okay, that's done. So let's run NeoFetch. And we can see that it's running the 32-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS. And that will be all about compatibility. Although that said, the 64-bit performs better but 32-bit still may have some uh, more compatibility with some of the maker side of the Pi. So I can see why they've done that. And it's not overclocked, it's running at stock 1500. And you can see this is my 4 gig Pi. So let's have a quick look at the software. So as I said before, this shows up Pi panel whenever you start it up. So there's uh, all sorts of Let's Code lessons and Python lessons uh, and projects and various different things in here. So a really nice way to get started. Uh, but we also have the sort of conventional way of using a computer. So we've got programming, we've got education, we've got the uh, internet, which is uh, Chromium web browser. We've got VLC media player for playing video and audio files. We've got an image viewer for viewing our photos. Under accessories, most of the same things you'd get with Raspberry Pi OS, but we also do have Plank, which is this really nice dock, very configurable dock down the bottom here, which I really like. So electronics, we've got the Arduino side of it. Uh, under help we've got bookshelf and uh, what this does on a Pi is gives you access to various different Raspberry Pi and also books and Hackspace here as well and Wireframe magazine so you can download them for free and view them on your Pi or print them out if you choose. Then under preferences we've got add remove programs. Uh, I don't know what the password is on this. I've tried a few different things and I couldn't find what it is. I'll put it in the description um, but because mine I guess was all pre-set up uh, someone has already created a password on it. And you can see for switching off, you've got this logout option, which is just standard. Uh, and at the top here, we've already got VNC installed for remote access to this device. Uh, the battery level, I thought if you clicked on it, it might give a percentage, but I guess it just goes down as you're using it. Mine shows that it's charging because it's got a power cable plugged into it. You can see Bluetooth, and we've got my network here as well, and also access to the sound. So they've got a very nice, simple to use operating system, which really fits the device well. So this is the crow tail part of the kit, uh, which is all the maker side of it. And it comes with a really nice book uh, with all sorts of information in there. Uh, and it's really clear and easy to understand. Lots of things are already installed onto this laptop anyway, uh, or on the SD card. 
and uh, you can work through that if you're into the maker side of it. So this part, which the guide mostly refers to, uh, has GPIO pins to go on top of the Pi. Uh, and you can use that, or you can use this board that I've put here with a couple of things plugged in, because I want to show you how it works. And you have these very handy plugs, which you can just pop in uh, and then connect all the different attachments to. So things like a humidity sensor, uh, an LCD screen, all sorts of lights, buzzers, all sorts of things, even motors and servos and things like that, uh, and also a remote control. But have a look on the site if you want to go through all the details on that. I'll just show you this quick demo uh, with this one. So I plugged in the board that comes with the kit and also the ribbon cable. This is a motion sensor and this is an LED light. There's no script running at the moment, so the LED light is just on. So if we go over to the computer and we can go to the folder, and in here I've got RPI starter kit and examples and here are all your example code so if I get a number seven that will automatically launch in Thony and if I hit play the light goes off and then if I move my hand you can see the light comes on immediately detecting the motion so this is the motion sensor detecting the motion and the LED light coming on and there's loads more stuff in there like that if you're into the maker side of it it is great now I couldn't see any software for the webcam or the microphone and uh, as I don't know the password in this OS and I wanted to try different operating systems anyway, I'm going to boot up a different operating system. Now the operating system is running from an SD card so let's shut it down first of all and you'll see the light go out when the machine is off. Let's just unplug the Ethernet cable while it's doing that. You can see no signal has come up on the screen. Okay so that's off. Let's unplug and turn it over. Because I wanted to show inside this panel. Because the SD slot is actually on both sides of this device. And you can switch to the other slot just by switching that. Now, so obviously this is the operating system that's in there. I could also push in and that's ejected. So that's not going to be reading that. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to boot from USB. So let's pop this back on. Because I've got on this SSD drive... Uh, KDE Plasma which is my main operating system on the Pi. So if I plug that into the USB 3 socket on this device, plug my Ethernet back in and let's switch it on. So because we effectively have no SD card in there it should automatically select USB boot which it has so let's log in and no problems with resolution it's just started up straight away. And as you can see, it's detected dual desktops. Okay, so I've switched it that my monitor is now the primary display, and this is the secondary display. So you can see I can drag from one screen to the other with the mouse, nice and simply, and it handles that perfectly. Uh, but I'm going to continue on the top screen because it's easier to show it with screen capture. So let's try and get this webcam working. So if I go to the software store, because the webcam is supposed to show up like a USB camera. So let's do a search for cheese. And let's see what happens if we install that. Okay, so that's finished installing. So let's hit launch and see if it detects the camera. You can see it opening at the bottom here. Yeah, so the web camera works just like an ordinary USB camera, which is great. Uh, let's see what we can do with the microphone. Uh, let's go for Audacity on this, which is some brilliant audio editing software. Okay, so that's installed. So we can launch that. And uh, it says default microphone, so we'll see what happens if we just start pressing record. Yeah, I can see it's picking up the audio straight away. Uh, I wonder if we can play that back through the speakers. So let's stop that, hit play. Okay, so I've got no sound, so I must have to enable that. I probably got it set to something different in here. Let's try the HDMI audio. Yeah, I can see it's picking up the audio straight yeah. away. You can hear that's uh, playing back. Play so the microphone works uh, and just again looks like it works like a standard USB microphone so no extra configuration. To think that this is the first time that I've tried both the webcam and the microphone both were picked up straight away so that's really nice to see. Let's quickly try a bit of YouTube and see what the audio sounds like on that. Okay so the sound is pretty functional uh, it's quite tinny but it is better than having no sound plus we have uh, an audio output jack still so we can plug in headphones or a speaker and also because it's a Pi it's got Bluetooth as well. Just going to have a look and see if I'm overclocked uh, because I would imagine I am because this is the operating system I use all the time although I might have turned it off uh, for a different video. 
Okay, so I'm overclocked to 1800, so that's pretty safe for a Pi. Um, the fan doesn't seem to be any faster. Uh, it seems to be performing exactly as I would expect it to. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely coping with that. I could probably push it quite a bit higher. Uh, now, I'll have P-Sensor on here as well, which is a way of checking the temperature. So let's see how hot it is. I've been playing a bit of YouTube, I've been installing things. Uh, so at the moment, 58 degrees, yeah, no worries with that at all. So the cooling is, is actually pretty quiet. It's, it's certainly not an annoying fan. I'm conscious there's a fan there because I pretty much always use my Pi Silent, but it's not annoying and uh, it's surprisingly quiet considering what it's doing. So let's try a different operating system. So in the instructions, there's a list of operating systems. You can see Raspbian, Ubuntu, CentOS, and many more. Um, but they didn't mention Windows 98, so let's give that a try. Uh, so run installed operating system, and this one. I've got a separate video on how to install Windows 98 and Windows 95 on a Pi 4, but it looks like it's booting up all right. Okay, it doesn't seem to like the mouse, but if I hit the tab key and enter, I can still launch programs from here. So Windows 98 is working on here. I don't know why it doesn't like the mouse. Probably because I installed it using a different mouse, maybe, uh, using the method I used in the video. But let's see if we can have a little go on Elastomania. Yeah, all of this is working. Yeah, working perfectly. And the sound sounds all right on this game. It's obviously pretty basic sound. So let's try something else. Great to see Pi Mega working, and uh, if we try and launch a game, so something like Cannon Fodder. So Cannon Fodder is working, but I haven't got any sound, so I probably need to play around with that um, to be able to get that working. But you can see that it's lovely and smooth, and everything's working as it should be, which is great to see. And here's Batacera, which wasn't mentioned on that list, but as you can see, is working fine. So if we pick something like PlayStation, and Dave Mirror Freestyle BMX, Yeah, that's working fine. Great to have this on a portable device. Uh, so PlayStation and also Dreamcast, PlayStation Portable, all the other things that run so well on a Pi 4. So I'm actually really impressed with what Elecro has done with this laptop. It, uh, it's a bit chunky, um, but what can you do if you're trying to fit a Pi 4 inside a laptop? And I think actually they've done a really good job. So obviously the Pi 4 is in this side. You can see why they put the trackpad at the back uh, because there's more room for the keyboard. And actually it's a really nice big keyboard. It's nice and responsive. Uh, when I've played games on it, it's been absolutely fine as well. So uh, yeah, great job. And thanks very much to Elecro for sending it to me. I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.